This is the Genesis GV70 Electrified. We reviewed the ICE version of this, the diesel one as well before, but now we have an electric version of it, which uh, is pretty interesting. This will cost you around 75,000 pounds for the full whack with all the extras added on. But is it worth the price tag? We're about to find out. Let's start with the design from the front of the car. We have our usual Genesis uh, logo here with a crest in the middle. And then we'll look at this big grill that we have on the front as well. This big grill also represents the Genesis crest, uh, which we'll see on the logo. In fact, this is all closed off, so there's nothing here, but it's also designed to be aerodynamically friendly as well. And there's one little trick here, which is where the charging port is. It's nicely hidden away, so you don't really notice that it's there. This supports fast charge, so this is built on an 800 volt uh, platform, which means if you're able to find a 350 kilowatt uh, charging point, you'll be able to charge this up very quickly, which is a bonus for people who's gonna be driving this uh, every day or on long journeys. You wanna charge it back up very quickly so you can get on your journey. Below that, obviously, before we get there, we have the camera there, which we'll talk about more when we talk about the safety features. But right below here is where the actual cooling is. So that's placed right at the bottom with a couple of sensors there for parking and all that stuff. We look at the headlights. We have LED headlights, obviously, for energy saving. And it's also got uh, matrix LED lights and daylight running uh, lights there as well. The indicator lights are also LED, all built in into that double stacked uh, sort of LED design system that's wrapped around the front there, just to give you that nice sporty look. I like mostly everything about the front apart from this bit here. Uh, it feels like it's hanging off it and it's not meant to be like that, but that's just uh, a design flaw in my opinion. That shouldn't be like this. We move on to the side of the car things get a bit more interesting a little bit we have an optional 20 inch alloys on this which you'll pay extra for it also affects the driving style of the car but not too much in terms of road noise again i'll talk to you about the road noise feature where we get inside of the car it's really quiet uh, if you want to find out already but we'll talk about why that's quiet on the inside then we come here we have the piano black finishing on the edge of the side mirror with your indicator light there as well and then we've got a camera located right at the bottom of the mirror there for parking and all that stuff. And then we've got door handle as always. We've got this nice leading line that goes all across, all the way to the back, then it splits around here because what happens is when you get to the back, the back brake lights are also split to match the front and they're both wrapped around the side of the car, which is pretty cool. I like what they've done there on the design. You've seen Genesis cars on the road, which they're starting to become more and more popular now, especially in the UK, in London anyway. You start to notice that the design DNA is what they use all around the car. Genesis is part of the Hyundai, Hyundai, if I'm saying that right now, because they've done their uh, campaign about how to say it properly. Um, they're part of the Hyundai group. This is their premium arm of the group, which means you should be getting loads of premium features when you buy a Genesis car. If we back up a bit, you can see how it kind of like slopes at the back uh, towards the back line because they're trying to give you that compact look, but it doesn't affect the sitting position when you get on the inside, which I really like. I like that they've color coded the uh, uh, this area here on the car because usually you get that black cladding that goes on here on cars, which I don't like. I like the way they've color coded it, which is pretty smart. And then we move to the back of the car. We get this nice roof spoiler. We got the uh, shark fin. Uh, antenna up top there but this has also got your brake lights nice and slim on the spoiler which is smart tinted uh, back area there and then moving on to the back of the car we have like I was saying the uh, brake lights are there the tail lights are there which is really nice obviously this is electric so you don't get any exhaust pipe coming out from this although this is an electric version of the GV70 they still managed to keep the car looking the same not too electric-y if that makes sense uh, in fact the only way you know that this is electric is via the number plates with a green tab on there and the little E logo that's discreet on the front where the uh, where you charge the car. Um, you've got the GV70 logo there. This is nice and smooth and slick. Again, this is just their design language. Genesis written on the back there. And then to open the boot, they've nicely integrated it into where the wiper is, uh, the motor is there, which is smart. And then in fact, Let's get in here and see what kind of boot space we have. We have plenty of boot space. You have just over 500 liters of boot space. As you can see, we have our equipment in here, which is, uh, you can release this to get more room. So if you wanna put more stuff from your Ikea uh, or Ikea shopping, you can stick that in there. But this is really nice. You can fit in a bunch of stuff in there. The seat on the back is a 60-40 split, so you can fold that down and get a bit more room in there. There's also a charging point, which is a 250 volt charging point. So if you wanna plug in your laptop or a Hoover or something like that to clean the car, you can plug it in there and you're good to go. There's also a vehicle to load feature on this, which means on the front, you can just get your camping chair out, plug in your laptop and 
charge your laptop away or it can even charge other vehicles as well uh, so you can uh, dish out around 3.5 kilowatts uh, in terms of power to charge other devices or other vehicle which will be kind of slow but it's there if you need to boost someone before their battery runs out Ugh. all right we're in the back seat and uh, things feels very premium in here it's very comfortable plenty of headroom um, I mean I'm 5 foot 11 so it's more than enough for me, there's no problems there at all. Plenty of knee room as well. I think this driving position is not where I normally sit. That's just there now until I start the engine and that moves forward. So when it moves forward a bit more, there's even more room for my knees. There's space here to store things. So you can put your magazine and all that stuff there. Uh, my feet, it's nicely tucked away underneath here as well. Nice and comfortable for long journeys. And you can even fit people in the, in the middle seat here as well. Uh, we've got... Uh, our armrests over here with cup holder so you can put two cups there two bottles nice and cool what else do we have here we have our climate control here for the back passengers we even have heated seats which comes with the comfort pack so you have to pay extra for that to have it for the passengers in the back we have a usb charging port here so there's two usb a charging ports so not usb c it would have been nice to have a usb c ports in there maybe one usb c one usb a that would have been nice but i think this feels really nice i love the material in here um it's a it's a nice color that won't get dirty very quickly so if you're going to be taking kids in here you don't have to worry about having to clean this all the time i love the stitching as well and the white sort of contrast on the piping on here which looks really good you can also have things like a nice blind uh there so that you can keep yourself nice and cool when it's sunny outside you can block the, block the uh, outside sun uh, which is nice to have that here we have a sunroof here which is cool it just gives it um a sense of more space in here than you actually have even though you've already got plenty of space in here you have a coat hanger here as well on both sides i like that they've done that one thing i really love about this car what genesis do is we have two buttons here that allows you to control this seat um, so that way you don't have to get out to control the seat if you want to let people in or out or move things so for example i can just press that to move the seat forward press it to move it backwards and I can also slide the whole thing forwards and backwards as well. So having that there just helps with convenience. I think other than that, things feels very comfortable in it. I really like it. I think for long journeys, I'd be rest assured to enjoy myself and just, you know, relax. So we're in the driver's seat and things feels very premium again, very cozy. A little bit disappointing that as an electric car, we still have this massive column here, but that's as a result of this being built on the same platform as the non-electrified version. Uh, so there's not a lot of space in here. It just feels nice and tight and cozy. You still do get your pockets here for your bottles, two cup holders here, and another cubby hole here, which you can put things like keys and all that stuff. And here we have a wireless charging mat. So if you have a wireless charging device, you can put that there and charge your device. There's two USB ports here, uh, so you can do phone projection. So Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, but via cable only, it's not wireless, unfortunately. And I've had issues with that as well. So you have to use the right cable. It keeps telling me, even though it is the right cable. Uh, so sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I just don't get why car manufacturers just don't get the tech right. That, that's such a simple thing and that should just work uh, first time, every time you plug it in. That aside though, uh, you have plenty of buttons here. There's, I, love, I do love buttons. Um, even though that's touchscreen over there, they still give you buttons there to control what's over there. Because what you think is to be able to reach over to that whilst you're driving or for whatever reason, it's a bit of a far reach. So it's nice to have a control here. One qualms I have though is the gear selector and the uh, control here, they look too similar. So a lot of the time, I've had this now for about a week and the whole time I keep, I'm still using the wrong thing. So when I need to control that, end up using the gear selector. Luckily it doesn't do anything while I'm driving, but otherwise that's confusing and it would have been nice to have that. Maybe swap them around. So once this is done, it's that's that. I don't have to touch that again while I'm driving and I can have this here just uh, an easy reach. This is also nicely designed. I love this nice crystal sort of cut design that it's got. This is also touch sensitive, so you can use this when doing your map, for example, so you can write a postcode on here, for example, and it works really well, uh, surprisingly. And then here we have buttons for your drive and terrain uh, mode as well. So you can choose different drive mode. Uh, so if I uh, start this up, you get that welcome sound as well, which is cool. 
Here we can select different drive modes. So we have Eco, we have Comfort, we have Sport mode. We talk about the response when we start driving, but Eco basically just eases off everything in terms of throttle response. And then Comfort is very similar to Eco, uh, but things are a lot more comfortable in terms of the softening the, the dampers. So when you're going over speed bumps and, and stuff like that, it's very soft and the steering is a lot softer as well. And then you have Sport mode where things get a bit, a bit more aggressive. You get more uh, hoomph in terms of no to 60, uh, which is interesting. It's actually really fast. This would do zero to 62 in 4.2 seconds. And that for a big car like this, is actually impressive. I don't know if you'd be using that if you're a family of five in the car. I don't think you'd be, you're gonna be doing those sort of speeds, but it's there if you need it. And then you got you can push it down and change terrain as well. So you can do a bit of off-roading maybe. You got snow, mud, and sand. We've tried it whilst driving here and it responds very well, not gonna lie. We can select the ADAS system here, which allows us to do things like uh, semi-automatic driving. So you can see the little indicator there, just pointing, which is right there and uh, we have all our regular information like speed and all that stuff and power consumption and the way that the booster is working when you're driving and the range information as well. Uh, so for example, if we change the uh, paddle shift there and tap to different level, you can see that level changing from max, eye pedals on now, uh, you can drop it back down using the other side. Uh, so if I just tap that again, you can drop it down, eye pedal off, level two, off completely. So it's up to you if you wanna have it on or off. So you have the option there. I love the leather finishing. It's not real leather, by the way, uh, but I love the finishing. I love the stitching on here as well. It's also got a fingerprint sensor here. So with that, you can store your driver uh, profile information. So for example, once you get in, tap away, it'll remember your seating position, what radio station you were using, the last settings uh, for your, that you've set, that will be there for you, which is pretty cool. You also have this area here, which is used for your climate control and a few buttons for maps, uh, navigation, radio, media setup, and as a light uh, warning on there. But here, it gives you nice haptic feedback every time you press it. So as you press it, it gives you a nice haptic feedback, but that you can also change in the settings when we go through uh, the infotainment system there. You can change the level of what you've got in terms of haptic feedback. So if you want it to be strong or not as intense, you can change all that kind of settings. Big display on there, which we'll go through as well. Same for the, the instrument cluster here. You have a 3D sort of display, which can turn on and off. We have heads up display on there, which is nice and bright in all different situation. And then on the steering, we have this boost button on here. And what that does is when you drive in, it gives you a 10 seconds boost. Uh, so it's useful for overtaking. If you really want to quickly, you know, just overtake, it has a bit of uh, power there to do so. But the button placement where that is, is interesting. I don't know if I like it or not. It's good because you don't want to use it all the time. So you don't want to tempt the driver to use it all the time if it's within easy reach. And it's bad because I have to do this every time I want to use it. You know, if I want to overtake, it's not something I think about first. It's just, I mean, I do think about it to make sure it's safe, but I'm, I'm talking about when I really want to do it, I just go bam and you just want to go rather than go, okay, boost and then you, and then you go. So, so we have all these nice buttons here. We've got the boost button there. We've got the uh, active cruise control button area and semi-automatic driving. That's uh, also there as well. You've got your volume control here so you can go up and down. Nice tactile feedback on here, which I really like. You can configure the mode button to wherever you want and also that favorite button as well. You can configure those, uh, which is pretty cool. One thing I really like also is part of the safety feature is when you indicate, for example, this area changes, uh, uses the camera to show you what's on the right side. And when you go to the left side, that will switch to the left side so you can see what's in your blind spot as well as the blind spot assist on the mirror. So that's, uh, that's a pretty cool feature to have. That's a good use of that space. What I also love about the ambient lighting in here is the way this is actually quite finished. It's got this nice matte finishing, different layers, almost like a wooden sort of finish, but it's not. So it kind of just looks, it just blends in really nicely with the rest of the car. And you can change the colors as well to different colors. Uh, you can customize it to what you want. So we can have garnet red, we can have peridot green, whatever that is, emerald blue green, there's loads of different colors here. We've got this purple color as well. So you can just set different mood uh, to suit your preference. On the steering as well, you can move this up and down electronically, which is convenient. You can move it towards you or further away from you. Nice and convenient. Let's go through an infotainment system, see what we have as well. It looks really good, it's nice and big. It's got loads of settings, loads of configurations, uh, which I really like. So we have a large 14 inch display, which is also touch sensitive. So you can swipe across and control it like so. This is good for the passenger who sat on that side so they can control that if they need to. But if not, as a driver, there's a controller here which moves 
left and right, up and down, and rotates as well. And like I said, you can also right turn it when using map. Uh, so here we have our home screen. So this is uh, just right off the bat what you see. And then scroll across, which gives you different tiles here. So you have EV menu, map, navigation, radio, media, connected services, uh, et cetera, and phone projection. Uh, here you can also change the settings for that. So if you go up top, uh, we can select profile for one. So you can have different people, different users in a household, for example. Uh, if you go back and on here, you can set the display to be off completely or you can reorder the, the icons as well. So if you want in different order, uh, you can do that. So that's pretty useful to have. Uh, but back to the menu here though. So if you go to EV menu, this is where you see your range that's left. And uh, uh, it will tell you if I put the air conditioning on, I'll get 167 miles. If I leave it off, I'll get 170 miles left on my battery charge here, which is pretty cool. So it tells you about your uh, preconditioning and also EV charge transfer. So if you wanna use a vehicle to load, it gives you all that information there. Uh, if we go across uh, here, we can go to our settings and see what you can get. So that's phone projection that I was talking about earlier, but you'd have to connect your cable for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. But if we go to settings, uh, we have loads of different options available here. So if, first of all, if you go to vehicle settings, we can see our driver assistance uh, option. So here you can see things like your speed limit warning, lane safety, forward safety, uh, your driver convenience, you've got blind uh, spot safety as well, and parking safety. Uh, we go to drive mode. Uh, here you can change different ones as well, so like eco, et cetera, like we talked about earlier, and braking comfort as well. So if you want it to be sharp or just softer, you can do that. You also have active sound design. And what this is basically is, as this is an electric car, it's pretty much quiet, so there's no sound. But if you want to, you can have fake noise coming out the car, so you can have uh, minimize, normal or enhanced. Um, honestly, I don't know why you'd have any of these uh, because the whole point of having an electric car is to have it nice and quiet in the first place. So you can do that. And then we have our head up display settings. So you can adjust how bright it is, content selection, and also the height and stuff like that. Our instrument cluster, which is what's here, you can change the settings as well. So like the brightness, but one thing to show here is the 3D depth. So for that 3D settings, you can uh, have a maximum, medium, or turn it off completely. Uh, but depends on your vision. If your vision allows it, have it maximum because it looks pretty cool. It looks like the cars are in 3D, for example, which I quite like. Next, you have all your climate settings option and there, seat settings. Uh, one thing that's cool with the seat settings is you have uh, smart support, uh, which just adjusts the seat bolster depending on which drive mode you have. But also have uh, this thing called, uh, if I can find it here, smart posture. Uh, settings which basically just checks your posture and adjusts the bolsters and everything else just to help you with your sitting posture and your also you have seat massage in here uh, so which is cool for long journeys you have intelligent um, high beams so when you're on the motorway you go after uh, over certain speed it will come on and off when it needs to to light up corners for example you got auto locks feature tailgate settings and all that kind of stuff and convenience but I think the main thing there is driver assistance. You have loads of safety options there, uh, which is cool. It gives you that peace of mind that you, the car looks after you as much as you look after the car as well. Back into EV settings, we have our smart recuperation settings. Uh, so if I scroll down here, we go to smart recuperation. Uh, so this, uh, you can adjust using the paddle shift there. So you can go from uh, minimum to, you can go from different levels. So level one, level two, you can turn it off, level three. And then there's maximum mode, which gives you the iPedal mode, which means everything's done intelligently, depending on where you are. It can do like pre-sensing of the road with speed bumps and all that kind of stuff. And if you leave it at max, at max, it just means you can do one pedal driving, which is really cool. Uh, for such a big car, uh, one pedal driving is good to have. For sound, we have a lexicon sound system in here and it's very good. Again, you have quantum logic surround sound. Uh, you can change the position. Uh, you can change equalizer settings as well if you know what you're doing. So you can adjust treble, the mid range and bass, and uh, you can adjust your guidance uh, settings as well, which is good. Everything else is to do with like your theme, the display settings, you can change different things to do with what you prefer and your preference. But other than that, really good system, very responsive. I have no complaints there at all and has loads of tech features for you to adjust and just make it your own. Parking is also very easy in the GV70 Electrified. There's a parking camera here, which uh, you press the button and you have different camera angles and views uh, of the car. Remember I was showing you the camera on the mirrors earlier? This is partly what this is used for. So if we tap this, you can view different angles of the car. Uh, so showing that the, one of the doors are open at the moment. So you can see it around the car as well. Uh, or you can also have a 360 degree view of the car, which you can also move around and see the surroundings and stuff like that. But most importantly, on this side, it shows you your parking structure, your parking space. But what's also cool at nighttime, it actually eliminates these lines 
this yellow line, as you can see, it will eliminate that to the outside. So when you're looking in the mirror, it can also follow that as you're parking as well. This also has parking assist, uh, which I quite like. So let me just go back for a second. We'll press and hold uh, the parking camera here. This will check for spaces around you and then you can select different motion if you want to drive into it, if you want to reverse out. Uh, you can select your exit direction, which will help you park into spaces. So for such a big car, that's very useful because then you can just park without having to worry about, you don't have to stress about how you're going to park the car. So very useful. Okay, so at the start, I say this exact version here will cost you around £75,000, but this actually starts from £65,535 before you start adding all the optional equipments that you can add to this. But the only model that's available is a sport version, so you just have that one model that you can pick from and then you add to your optional equipment. So we have the Innovation Pack, which costs around £3,560. That gives you that big 3D cluster display that we have in the instrument cluster. We have head-up display, highway drive assist version 2, quad LED headlamps with intelligent front lighting system and forward collision warning and all that kind of stuff. All the extras you get with that. You also have the convenience pack which costs 1180 uh, This gives you the automatically dimming exterior mirrors, gives you heated seats, front heated steering wheel. You have the rear air conditioning with auto temperature control with the, it's called the third zone. You have the premium cabin filter as well for those who hate pollen and all that stuff. So those are quite pricey. So you can get comfort seat pack as well, which gives you the seat massage, the cushion extension and all that stuff. So you can get that ventilator seats up front. And then you've got the sound system as well. So that Lexicon premium sound system, you're looking at 990 pounds just to get that extra. And then for the second row comfort seat pack, so, if, so for them to be able to get those uh, heated seats and stuff like that, that's extra 600 pounds. That vehicle to load package we talked about, that's 880 pounds. The sunroof pack, it's whopping 1,460 pounds. You can combine the convenience pack for the driver and the second row comfort seat as well. That's 1,780. And that fingerprint reader, guess how much that is? 80 pounds. So when you start adding all the bits and bobs on here, you're looking at upwards of 75,000 pounds, which puts it in the same bracket as your Model Y and those more expensive, well-known vehicles out there. One of the coolest features on the GV70 is the ability to move the car out of a tight parking space using a key. So you start it and then you can move it forwards like so. It checks the area as well so it won't crash into things, it will stop itself. Or you can just let go of the fob, of the button and it stops and you can move it backwards as well. So if you were to get yourself in a tight parking space, you can use this to get into that sort of, those sort of situations without any effort. It's pretty cool, right? Driving the GV70 Electrified is an experience. It's very quiet in here, and that's because it has active noise cancellation. This is the same technology, well, sort of the same technology you get in your headphones that you probably used to have in with noise cancellation. And what this does is it uses sound technology to sort of inverse the sound from the outside and plays through the speaker. So that way your ears can't discern the difference. That way it's nice and tranquil in here. And that's what you expect from an electric car. It's an electric car, so it's quiet as it is already. So having a calm environment in here also adds to that experience. And I love what we have here. It feels nice and premium. The heads up display looks really good. I can see it's not obstructing, obstructing my vision at all. Visibility is good as well. So all the pillars are good. The mirrors, I see everything the way that I should which is really good. I also like that the buttons uh, on the steering wheel controls majority of the things that I need to control. So that's good. It's nice within, it's, uh, within reach. And also the buttons here and everything that I need to control, if I need them, they're, not, they're, they're there for me. I also love this indicator thing, uh, this blind spot uh, camera that's on the dash. So every time I indicate, it helps with safety. It means I can see all around me, which is important. I don't want to end up driving into people, especially in such a big vehicle. Let's talk about some of the performance on this. So I've been driving around uh, country road lanes and I'm about to hop on the motorway now where this thing really shines. So when you're on the motorway, this feels really comfortable. Long stretch of roads, really nice and comfortable. Stick in comfort mode. It's just nice and smooth. It just glides, provided there's no speed bumps or, well, no speed bumps here, but there's no potholes or anything like that that you have to dodge. But other than that, it feels really nice and smooth. Look at that. Just It's just nice. And then you can use your highway uh, cruise control feature here for autonomous semi-autonomous driving you can stick that on and this will take over very quickly so if i just press this button here it shows it tells me that it's uh, active once i press it let me indicate to go over uh, here mirrors on and here we go so now that that's on i can press what uh, a couple of buttons on here to activate it i can set the distance that i want and then 
it can let the car do its thing. Which is, wow, really good. Look at that. But it will warn you, though, to put your hands back on shortly. And that's because in this country, we don't have full self-driving capabilities yet. So it's still going to warn you uh, to stick your hand back on the steering so you don't uh, let the car do everything. So it's, it's just a way to make sure that you're still there. Attention's always on the, on the driver. You're always driving at all times. The sensor's here to also monitor your activity. So in terms of being awake. So uh, if, you, if you notice that you've fallen asleep on all that kind of stuff, there's a sensor here that will monitor all that kind of stuff, all that information, which is pretty intelligent. Let's talk about the specs though here. So we talked about the battery here, it's 77.4 kilowatt hour battery. Uh, this supports fast charge. So if you find one of those INET um, 350 kilowatt charging point, you can charge this up very quickly. You have vehicle to load as well. Uh, in terms of speed, you're looking at zero to 62 in just 4.2 seconds. And you have that boost button as well that would boost things in 10 seconds spurt. So you press it, you push the pedal and you're good to go. Uh, so you can use that for overtaking when you need to, or if it's just a quick burst, you can use that, but do bear in mind that will affect your efficiency. Talking about range on the WLTP, this is quoted to do around 288, uh, but so far I've been getting around on average 200 miles on the WLTP for me, uh, which I think is okay. But when you talk about the price, uh, 75,000 pounds on this or starting price on the road price, just above 65,000 pounds, then you have to think about, is that worth it? Uh, 200 miles is quite, it's quite low when you need to compare it to your Model Y, for example, which will give you 300 miles. And then we don't even start to talk about charge network and all that kind of stuff. I'll leave that out of this conversation uh, before I annoy people. But the range in there for me is not good enough for efficiency. So for example, when you start sticking on your AC, so right now it says 150 miles on there. But if I turn the fan down to one, it goes to 152. If I bump this up, goes down to 144 miles so you lose a lot of range just by using the turning the ac on and giving it full blast so you don't have to start balancing things like sea heating and stuff like that just to keep yourself uh lasting longer in terms of the range on there but apart from that i think it's good you've got the paddle shift to control the energy recuperation so you can go from level zero all the way to max or you can use ipedal so you can get things to work intelligently for you but other than that, that's about in terms of efficiency. It's not the best up there. Uh, I'll definitely consider other manufacturers if I need to consider the efficiency. Okay, boost mode. It'd be rude not to try it out. So camera guys at the back there, it's gonna feel it. So this should be fun. So what we have to do is basically press this boost button here and then on the instrument cluster, uh, it would come up saying boost mode ready and then it will count down from 10 seconds. So. <laughs> Good rate <break> too. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh man, Whew. got my blood pumping there. But geez, yeah, that that you feel the power for such a heavy car. That was a really good pull, and uh, also inadvertently tried the brake in there as well. I didn't even mean to try the brakes, but the brakes worked really well. Um, so yeah, Whew. okay, let's 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 calm it down now. <laughs> when you use the boost function in here, you have to grip onto your steering very tightly because it becomes very front biased uh, so <laughs> what will happen is you feel like you're driving a front wheel drive car for a few seconds so do bear that in mind even though we have dual moto here one on the back one on the, on the front for, for that all-wheel drive experience you still have to bear that in mind that when it comes to that boost mode it becomes very front wheel biased so grip <laughs> hold on to your steering wheel very tightly <laughs> Uh, when it comes to car ownership and the running costs and stuff like that, Genesis actually give you a five year service plan. So it includes like warranty, if you have any, any issues, you can take it to them. But what's also great is because you can't actually buy these physically in store, you order everything online, what you get is they'll come to you. So once you ring up and say, I don't know, the tires have gone or some issues with the car, they'll come out, they'll give you a uh, courtesy car, they take the car away, get it fixed, bring it back, you give the courtesy car back, and that's for over for five years, which is really good. Or I think for the warranty up to 50,000 miles or something like that, but you do get five years. So I think that's a big bonus when you consider how much this costs. Let's talk about the handling on the road. Driving down this countryside, this windy roads, it's just really nice. You point it, that's exactly where it'll go. Stick into sports mode, it has a bit more power. The, the throttle response is much better 
uh, but you probably wouldn't be using that all the time because again that eats into your range so you probably wouldn't be using that uh, but in terms of cornering handles the corners very well I wouldn't say this is agile or nimble but it does a great job at pointing the steering where you want it to go and it does exactly just that the steering is nice and precise it's not too soft it's not too heavy depending on which mode you put it in so again for me I love a bit of effort on my steering because I tend to just drive just like this sometimes and I don't want the steering I don't want to work too hard basically other than that, I think it's good in terms of speed. Handling is great for such a heavy car. Uh, it might become a bit tasking when driving this in an urban environment when you have to keep turning and starting and stopping and stuff like that. But other than that, it's good. You've got a head up display. So much tech in here. And I love, I love technology, obviously. So having all this technology in here just ticks a lot of boxes for me. Efficiency is where it doesn't tick the box. Other than that, definitely, definitely say this one should be added to your shortlist uh, of electric SUVs uh, to consider if you're looking to buy one. Well, whilst I'm stuck in traffic, that is it from me for the GV70 Electrified. Uh, as always, let me know what you think in the comments below. If there's any questions you have, drop them there as well. Uh, by the way, one thing that's pretty cool, it tells you when the leading vehicle in front is driving on, it beeps. So if you ever change your change of focus from the road, that will tell you when to move off, which is added bonus. But yes, if this is your first time around here, smash the subscribe button and uh, notification as well. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.